Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting tutorial today. We're going to be building a circular carousel or as it's called infinite carousel. In the previous tutorial yesterday, I showed you how to create a, a normal carousel with like indicators down here. The difference here today is that if I start, we have five sections uh, within our slider in the carousel. If I go ahead and click on next all the time, it will actually go ahead infinitely and show the sections that we have yesterday when we were at section five when you click on this button it wouldn't like go after because that was the last section so you had to actually press on the previous button and the same go goes with like zero here if i you know go to the first section it can go all the way again adding content section five and you can go forever so let's get started I'm going to go to kotus.com uh, to our code editor here in the front end section and code editor. The first thing I would like to do is to define a div with the class container. Within our container, I would add a div uh, with the class slider. Within the slider, I'm going to add the actual with the class carousel, sorry. And then uh, within our carousel, we add the slider. And this is where our sections will reside. So now in the demo that I showed you a little bit before, I have five sections, so I'm just going to type content for section one and go ahead and copy it five times. So two, three, four, and five. Perfect. Going to the CSS, I'm going to style it. So giving the container uh, a width of 80%. And then let's just give it a margin top top and bottom 20 pixel and then left and right photo now i'm going to go and style the carousel we'll give it a width of 100 percent height of 100 percent making sure that i will give uh, my container a little bit of a height let's see let's say 300 pixel would go ahead and give it a, the carousel a border of two pixels solid let's give it orange for now I would like to add a little bit of a border radius, let's say three pixel. So all good. Uh, I would set the carousel's display to be flex. And I will tell you why uh, a little bit later in the tutorial. And say justify content, set it to flex start, right? So what it really means is that the child of the carousel, in this case a slider, will uh, basically uh, have an alignment from the start of its parent, which is carousel, right? So, so far, so good. Now I would uh, style the slider, set the display to be flex as well. So now sections are like this. Uh, we have five sections. So I would set the flex basis for, uh, let's just go and style our sections. So. Since we have five sections, uh, I would define the flex uh, basis to be 20%. So 100% divided by five, it's 20%. And make sure that the uh, slider has a height of 100%. Uh, also, I would set the flex shrink to be zero. So I don't want it to shrink. So, so far, so good. Um, now, the next thing I would like to do is set the flex to be 1. And um, let's see what else I can do. Um, I would like, because we have pretty much like five sections, I need to make sure that I also set the width to be 20%. So I'm going to save this prototype for now so that we have it right over here. So we have the slider, display flex, height 100 pixel, width to be 500 pixel. And I will tell you why. The reason why the width is 500 pixel is because we have five sections and we want to have only one section visible in our uh, carousel, right? So, so far everything looks all right. We have the slider, display flex, height 100 pixel, width, um, 500 pixel. I just want to make sure that the slider has a flex shrink of zero as well. So now we can see that um, we have only once uh, one uh, sort of section visible in the carousel border, right? Um, 
going to set the display for the section to be flex as well align items to be center so that it gets aligned vertically and then justify content to be center as well so content center uh, so now our content is uh, right in the center to show you how uh, the kind of visualize you how all these carousel and slider boundaries are I'm going to basically change this width from 80% to 20% right and we'll go ahead and say 10 pixel margin as you can see if I give this slider also a border so border one pixel solid green you will see that this area is the actual area of our carousel or the viewable area ultimately and now we have a slider that spans uh, its width over the uh, based on the width of its children which are these contents right so so far so good uh, we are almost done with regards to the HTML and CSS let's add the interactivity using JavaScript what am I going to do uh, within the carousel div? I'm going to create another div, I will call it controls. And within that, I'm going to put two spans. So one span, class arrow left, and then another span with the class arrow right. So let's just uh, make them a little bit more descriptive. So prev and next, right? So in my JavaScript, what am I going to do? I'm going to uh, create a constant, uh, which is an ES6 notation. Uh, in ES5 or in the previous versions of JavaScript, we had to use var. Uh, but now we know that this value is not going to change, so we define it to be constant. So I'm just going to say constant slider equals to document dot query selector and then slider. Uh, then the next thing I want to do is create another constant. I will call it prev. So this will be a reference to our document query selector and then uh, I'll call it prev. Well, not call it, but more of a reference to the prev class here. And then we have the next one, right? So within this, I'm just going to say prev and next. So this is good. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to position this prev and next prev over here and right over here. For that, since I'm going to use positioning uh, relative, uh, po uh, sorry, absolute positioning, I'll make sure that my carousel has a position relative, right? And then I will style my arrow class. I'm just going to set it to be position absolute. And then I would say top, maybe 10 pixel. And um, what else I want to have? I want to have, so arrow is position absolute, top, top um, 10 pixel. I suppose we should be able to see it now. <coughs> Excuse me. So class arrow and arrow, um, position absolute, top 20 percent we have our carousel which has a position relative so i suppose we should actually see them up here but let's go ahead and style them a little bit more so uh, for the left arrow so arrow prev let's just say prev here i want the left to be 10 pixel uh, and for the arrow uh, next I want the right to be 10 pixel, right? So now we have our prev and next, making sure that I add cursor pointer uh, so that they are sort of clickable. So at least we know that they are clickable. Uh, perfect. So now uh, let's say, uh, let's add an event listener to our next. So add event listener, click, and then passing a function. And then within this function, what I really want to do is to translate the slider uh, to the amount of the width of each sections, which is 20% to the minus uh, sort of axis, x axis. So I'm just going to say, I want the slider dot style dot transform to be translate minus uh, 20%, right? 
just to, just so that you guys see the sort of the slide animation i'm going to set the slider to have a transition of transition of all and 0 0.5 seconds right which is 500 milliseconds now if i press next uh, i expect that my slider which i have a, a reference here uh, transform translates minus 20 pixel right so let's give it a try let's see if uh, i'm just gonna open the chrome inspector to see if there is anything that i need to make sure i'm doing correctly so there is no error here so if i do next uh, i expect it to move uh to minus 20 percent let's see what's not correct so we have add event listener click on the next of course i have to change this to next so now if i click next you'll see that it slides and it shows the content section too and uh, now what uh, how we're going to make it infinite i'm going to set the margin here to be something bigger so we have a better view of what we want to happen so what i want to happen is that when i click next i want this slider to translate minus 20 percent on the x-axis but then ultimately when the trans transition finished i want to move the content for section one element from here and add it back at the end of the elements here right to be able to do that we have our slider we have to add an event listener to our slider called transition end and then i'll pass a function and then within this function, what I would like to do is slider dot append child. And then I just get the slider dot first child, first element child, right? So what it really does is that when this transition, which brings the content to in here and cons consequently content one out of the view, after this transition ends, I want to get this element and add it to the end of the slider, which is a slider append child slider first element child. And this is the first element child, right? So then what I would like to do, I want to reset the uh, translate to be back again to zero. So after that, our content for section two will become our first element. So I'm just going to set uh, slider dot uh, style dot transform and i'll set it to translate zero but the important thing is that because we have a transition in our slider you will see it goes to the section two and then it will go again to to uh, zero which is a very weird effect let me show you what i mean so if i do this you'll see this effect happens right which is not exactly what we want. So to be able to do that, to fix that, I'm just going to set the trans transition temporarily to none, right? And then after I do the translate, I will make uh, bring it back again to the default that we set, all 0 0.5 seconds. The thing with JavaScript is that uh, when it tries to interpret your code, when it comes to uh, styles like transition, it sometimes messes with the order because the, the execution is super fast. It doesn't consider it. So just to make sure that this effect happens, I'm just going to add the slider transition, resetting the slider transition into a set timeout function. We don't need to define any like timing because usually you can say, okay, set timeout for like one minute or whatever, one second or whatever. So now I'm just going to, uh, put the slider style transition to be reset to the one that we defined here in the set timeout. So what happens again, just to go through it, when I press next, uh, the, the slider will uh, transform minus 20 pixel. And when the transition ends, uh, I would like to get the first element, add it to the end of the, uh, you know, children uh, of the slider. And then I would like to set the transition to be none i will revert back the transition transform to be translate zero and then i will put back the transition right so now if you look at the effect if i do next you'll see that it's pretty much working the way 
we want and you can go forever and this will work perfectly so now what do we do with the prev button so pretty much the same way i'm just going to go ahead and set the prev copying this and instead of 20 pixel minus 20 percent it should go 20 percent but now we have to fix a bunch of stuff first thing is that if you notice we defined justify content to be flex start and that is something we want to utilize here so when i press next i still want the carousel dot style dot justify content to be flex start so the default value but when i press the sorry this is prev so i would copy this and add it over here so i want the carousel justify start to be start but when i go press prev i want it to be flex end so i want to so now you can see that the sort of the slider starts from here when we press uh, prev it actually aligns it from the end so the end section will come over here right you will see what i mean if i change this to flex end see what happens the slider the end of the slider with will be aligned with the end of the uh, carousel so i'm just going to change it back to flex start now the next thing we want to do is because I need to have some sense of the direction, so when I press next and prev, I need to know exactly what is the direction. And based on that, I will modify some styles. So now I will define a direction. So I will say var direction. I'm not going to give it any sort of uh, value initially. And then when I press next, I want to set the direction, let's say to minus one. And the reason I put minus one, because when we press next, the the slider goes to the negative uh, x-axis and then obviously the same way I will go prev but since the slider goes to the positive side I'm just going to set the direction to 1. Now in the event listener that we have for transition I just need to check if direction is 1 set the slider to append but else if direction Actually, this should be minus one because that's the next. So if direction equals to one, instead of slider append child, so instead of getting the first element and adding it at the end, we want to get the last element and add it to the first, right? So I'm just going to say slider prepend and then slider dot last element child, right? So, so far so good. So now let's see what happens. If I press next, I'm just going to move it a little bit up. If I press next, let's see what is not. Of course, we define the carousel over here. We need to actually define a reference to our carousel. So I'm just going to say carousel here, carousel here. And then here as well, we have, if I write it correctly, carousel here. So now if I press next, you'll see that it goes to section 2, section 3, section 4 and now if I press previous you can see that it actually goes to the other uh, side but now we have another issue which is very important so now let me do it again so next all good next all good previous suddenly you see it becomes section 1 and that is an issue that we have so if I press next now I'm section 2 section 3 section 4 section 5 if i press here prev i would want to see the section 4 but let's see what i see i see section 3 and then you know so forth so section 3 section 2 section 1 which is not exactly what we want right so i'll make sure i type it correctly here what we need to do is we need to check when we press if, since if we have pressed the next button, which sets the direction to minus one, we're going to check it. If direction equals to minus one, then I would like to set the direction to one, right? And also what I would like to do, I want to get this piece of code when the direction is minus one and add it over here right 
So now if you notice, next two, three, four. Now if I press prev, I will expect to see three, right? Which is exactly what we're going to see. So this is important. When the direction changes, we actually need to, uh, when we press the prev, we actually need to append the first element to the end of the slider, meaning putting it at the end. And also we need to do the same thing for the next. So bear with me, that's how we're gonna do it. So now we are almost done with our slider. Uh, I'm going here, I'm just gonna revert it back to 100, maybe 90 pixel, and then making sure that the width is auto. And uh, the next thing I want to do, remove the border from here, maybe uh, give it overflow hidden on the carousel and then change the body background to something a little bit of a light gray maybe like EEE -E -E, and then make the carousel having a background of FFF right so now you can see that our carousel is ready so four five one two three and then going back three two one five four three two one and then five back again so yes that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you haven't watched the previous tutorial on the first series in the carousel series go ahead and watch that up it will basically show you a lot of concepts that are used today so uh, it was a little bit of a sort of going over all those and doing the same thing but i thought maybe it's important to go over it uh, i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions or concerns please put it in the comment section like and share this tutorial and if you're new here please subscribe to the channel every day we're gonna have new tutorials have a good day and night and see you next time goodbye